Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon everyone. So, please uh, remember to find in your attendance at uh, Spectrum. <clears throat> so today we're going to, going to continue with your um, online presentation. Uh, <clears throat> um, so before we begin, Could begin just to um, update on the individual talks and also your project monitoring session next week. Okay. Um, uh, first, while we are doing the uh, individual uh, presentation, um, since this this is a uh, thinking and communication skills course, so basically to practice your presentation skill. Uh, so in terms of uh, presentation of your uh, slides, the material that you put on your slide, and uh, to keep the time okay, within to present your topic within the time limit. And also, since you need to ask questions uh, to practice your listening skills, you need to ask questions and also you need to wait the speaker uh, at the end of the talk. <coughs> um, so, uh, just a reminder, uh, please limit the talk to only five minutes. Okay? Um, so, if you hear uh, an alarm, that means that you only have one minute left. So, please um, uh, respect the time limit because we have 11 presenters today. Uh, we don't want to exceed the time. Um, so, each presenter is only given five minutes. <coughs> and for next week, uh, next week, we'll be having a project monitoring, monitoring session. So depending on uh, how long this session will take, we will continue afterwards with the individual presentation. Um, so what you need to prepare next week, uh, just the slides. You do not need to provide uh, any report for next week. You just need to um, provide an update. Uh, you can appoint the group leader or the group leader with another person to represent each group and provide the update on the project. Okay. Um, so what has been done? For well, for instance, if you are raising funds, the amount of funds that probably have been raised so far. So if you are preparing materials that you want to teach, uh, how far is that? Um, okay. um, so any updates uh, on the project. So basically to ensure that you have done something and everything is on track. Uh, if you have issues, if you have problems that you encountered uh, so far, you can also raise uh, next week. Okay. So any issues, um, problems that you uh, phase, uh, please raise this out uh, next week. Okay. And uh, the presentation is limited to eight minutes. Um, the shorter the better. Uh, just want to have an update on what has been done. Basically, the, the progress of the project so far. Okay. Uh, this is for next week. Um, so, any question for next week? Your monitoring session next week. Um, okay, if there's no questions, so we have 11 uh, presenters today. Okay. Uh, first up is uh, uh, Guan Po. Uh, so if you are ready, um, you can start anytime. Okay. Uh, remember the, the time limit. Uh, if, they, if you hear an alarm the first time, it means that you only have uh, one minute left. So you have already used uh, four minutes. 
Yeah. Uh, one moment, I said. Yeah, okay. Can you all see my screen? Uh, yes. It's my slide, right? Yeah, that's your slide. Yeah. Okay, so very good afternoon. I'm to Dr. Reza and my fellow friends. Uh, my name is Bogampo and I'll be presenting on the research study that I've done for my GLT1014 Advanced Communication Skills on the topic of should parents be held responsible for the actions of their children. Uh, okay, so uh, the intended audience are the youth and parents in Malaysia and the specific purpose of this speech is to enlighten my audience on the severity of social problems among teenagers in Malaysia and how parents play an important role. Then uh, my stand is that I believe that parents are responsible for the actions of their children. So let's straight move on to the introduction. Uh, Malaysia is confronting increased adolescent delinquency. In fact, with the introduction of the new medium of social communication technology, such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and others, the number involving juvenile delinquency has increased very dramatically in over the years. So these adolescents under 18 years of age have committed crimes such as assault, rape, molestation, sodomy, incest, burglary, vandalism, gang activities, theft and murder. The statistic released by the Malaysian Ministry of Home Affairs, which registered an increased number of 5,305 juvenile delinquency cases, where it went up from 3,399 cases in 2012 to 8,704 cases in 2013. So these numbers are at an alarming amount and thus it is the sole duty of parents to be, to keep an eye on their children at all times. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the main point. Uh, based on my research finding, many of the respondents are aware of the never ending rise of social problems among the adolescents. So let me point out the few, few, few juvenile delinquency that happened in Malaysia. I'm not sure whether any one of you notice that in 2017, there was a case. There was a case of alleged arson motivated by revenge, and most of the perpetrators are teenagers. Makes the tragedy even harder to accept. Uh, the tragedy resulted in 23 of the madrasa residents, comprising 21 students and two teachers, killed, while five others reportedly injured. According to Kuala Lumpur Police Chief Amar Singh, the suspects were tested positive for drugs and had previous criminal records under their belt. So the next incident will be the, the Johor Bahru cycling tragedy. Uh, the, the incident happened at about 3.30 a.m. on Saturday, 18 February 2017, when a 22-year-old female driver in a Nissan Almera hit the group of cyclists. A total of 16 teenagers were involved in the accident, six died on the scene, two more on the way to hospital, and the remaining eight are undergoing treatment at Hospital Sultana Amina. The youngest victim was only 13 years old. So uh, there was a huge debate on the factors on why juvenile delinquency is so prominent in Malaysia. Uh, so I believe that from my from my research finding, I'm uh, most of my respondent thinks that negligent parents are the reason behind the children's misbehavior and followed by peer influence. 
and 100% of the respondent thinks that parents play a vital role in the upbringing of their children. So there are, I, 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 can, I can think of three main factors that, that, that causes juvenile delinquency, one of which is families, where families also experience changes with the la within the last 25 years. Because more family nowadays consists of one parent household or two working parents, which, which consequently children are likely to have less supervision at home and that was common in the traditional family structure. So the obsession in pursuing material gains from the family has caused a rift in the family ties. This also can lead to poor parenting skills and resulting in adolescent's misbehavior. So moving on to peer group influence. Peer group influence is another contributing factor to social divides among adolescents and juveniles. The urge to try something new and provocation from the peer group often result in adolescents being involved in criminal activities. Uh, the habit of imitating a certain culture without without evaluating the good and bad of those cultures can also lead to adolescents to involve themselves in social divides. Uh, finally, is the academic background. So the statistic at the Hen Henry Gurney School and the prison department of education shows that 132 or 30 percent of the inmates receive a primary education and only 410 receive a secondary education. So despite all the factors that might contribute to juvenile delinquency, I believe that the parents play the most important role. So finally, uh, the effective punishment. Uh, according to the interview and survey response that I've conducted, majority of the respondents suggested that imposing a fine followed by serving jail term and send parents for parental training is the best way to, to punish uh, negligent parents. Mm. Despite many respondents agreed to set a punishment for negligent parents, some argued that no punishment should be meted on the parents. Okay, so in conclusion, the Malaysian government should enforce a law that holds parents accountable for the wrongdoings of their children. In conclusion, negligent and ignorant parents should be responsible for the actions of their children. Each member of society must have the opportunity and desire to fulfill their self potential in a healthy manner, uh, in a healthy way, with the objective of shared prosperity vision 2030. Uh, I think that's about time. Right? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, so, um, Kayu, uh, can I ask the question? Kayu? Uh, hi, Gon. Uh, I have some questions regarding your talk just now. My first question is, as a teenager, do you think uh, the influence of parents or friends are more important? And my second question is, do you think being strict to your children help uh, preventing from them to misbehave? Thank you. Uh, very good question. Uh, so for the first question, uh, I, b I believe parents play the most, the most important role because peer influence can be controlled if the parents is strict enough. So if the parents like make sure that their children is not is not sticking to those negative side of friends, those those peer, those negative friends, and I'm pretty sure they can avoid most of the influence they get from them. So I think parents plays a more important role in this scenario. And for your second question, uh, what's the second question again? I forgot. Being strict to your strict. children help them to prevent from being misbehave. Yeah, strict. Uh, I believe most of the children now, I mean, especially teenagers, we will rebel, we rebel when we reach adolescence, so that that thing cannot be changed. But I still think that being strict does cause children to misbehave, but there must be also a leisure or a or a, or a space given to the teenagers so that they don't they, they don't feel controlled and like they. I think the most important is parents should educate them that what is good and what is bad. So once they know how to differentiate, then we will let the children decide what, what, what they want to do. So once they actually have the good picture of what is good and what is bad, then they will not commit anything that is bad. I hope I answer your question. Okay, I think you are answering Kayun's question. Uh, okay, I have 
Tak apa, kuasa. Uh, so, um, who were the respondents of your um, survey again? Uh, uh, about 21 students from University of Malaya. I, okay. Yeah. Um, so, is your conclusion that parents um, are uh, is they, uh, uh, responsible for the actions of their children? Is that based on the result outcome of this survey, or is that based on uh, what you think is? Uh, based on the survey, fifty-seven point one percent believes that negligent parents are the reason behind a child's misbehavior, mm -hmm. then followed by peer influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this pedo so parents you... is uh, just a troll <laughs> answer mm -hmm. from my friend. Yeah. So basically, you you agree with the outcome of the survey, or do you, do you have? Uh, do you yeah, my, have... my personal my personal stand is that children is responsible for their actions of their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my that stand. Is... But until the age of eighteen, because uh, based on, based, according to the child law, right, a children is only considered a child mm -hmm. if they are below eighteen years old. So once a children is above eighteen years old, I think they really can make their decision on themselves and they should be responsible for their, their actions. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Quentin, for the presentation. Yeah. Um, uh, so next, uh, we have uh, Monil, who's going to talk about SpaceX Starship project. And Amir Yusuf is going to ask a question. Okay, remember you are ready. Uh, and please wait. Uh, 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 please wait. Uh, one, uh, two, right. There. All right. Uh, Doctor, can you see my screen? Yes. And can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. All right. Okay, you can proceed. Okay, uh, good evening to Dr. Reza and my fellow classmates. I'm Munir and I will discuss with you with an interesting recent advancements in space exploration. Now, I want you to imagine, imagine you ride an airplane and to travel to another country. Once you have reached the destination, you left the airplane, but the airplane will self-destruct itself. Now, I know in reality that is not the case, well, thankfully. Um, but that has been the situation for space launch for the last few decades. So you launch a payload into space and your rocket will disintegrate itself in the atmosphere. Now, why this is a problem? Well, basically, if you launch one rocket, if you make one rocket for one rocket launch, um, the cost will be extremely high. But if you make one rocket for multiple launches, the cost of launching payload will be substantially lower, just like an airplane which is why we have reusable rockets. So SpaceX is the only launch provider currently to operate reusable rockets. And since 2015, they have proved that reusable rockets are feasible. And now they're trying to take a step further. So presenting to you, Starship. Um, now, to give you a sense of scale, uh, this is NASA Saturn V rocket. Saturn V is the biggest and the most powerful rocket ever made. And it was the same rocket that brought humans to the moon 50 years ago. And this is Starship, which is even bigger and more powerful and carry, can carry more payload. So um, what's significant about Starship is that um, the rocket is designed to be fully reusable. And once you have a fully reusable rocket, it enables us to do some crazy things. So first, you can travel anywhere on Earth in less than one hour. Also, we can have more moon missions and establish a lunar base. And lastly, the most important of all, the ability to reach our neighboring planet, Mars. So um, to show you how Starship works, I'll be showing you a video.
Now, considering these possibilities, this, it is actually not too far off, as you might think, from this standpoint of time. Why? Because SpaceX today, as of December of 2020, they actually have a few working prototypes of Starship. And actually, there will be a high altitude flight happening this week. So what does this all mean to you, my fellow classmates? So you can see it like this. The same way you have access to airplanes to travel long distances today might also be the same way you can travel to space in the future. So all in all, I can say that humans are very adventurous creatures and we like to push ourselves to the limit. And for that, thank you for listening. Okay, uh, thank you um, for, the, for the talk. Um, uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, everyone. Uh, so, Muhammad, I have uh, two questions for you. First, uh, between the Saturn V and the spaceship, uh, the Starship, yeah, sorry. Saturn V, yeah. Uh, uh, you said that uh, Saturn V can only be used once and then destroyed, but the spaceship can yeah. be reused, right? Yeah. Does it cost more or is it the same? Or you mean cost of building it? Uh, yeah, the cost of one unit of Saturn V and the uh, Starship. Yeah, so um, the Saturn V, that, that same rocket, yeah, uh, they, they, in order to, to make a mission, like to launch the humans to, uh, to the moon, they, they only can only have, make one rocket for that one mission. So. Uh, the rocket lifts off and then the state in, it stays separate and then all the parts of the rocket will be in the, uh, the, the atmosphere. So compared to Starship, uh, the rocket will launch into space and then it will return back to Earth. Both of the parts will return back to Earth. So that uh, that is the reusability part. So in terms of cost, um, well, I can say that the cost of building for both rockets are you know roughly the same. But in the long term, knowing that Starship is reusable, um, the cost of you know bringing any payloads to, to orbit will be substantially lower due to the reusability factor yeah so basically we are building one rocket that we can use multiple times so if we at least need yes. to treat it already uh, we are making yes. profit just yeah just like we have with airplanes today all right uh, my second question is you said that uh, in the future we might be able to do earth to earth uh, uh, flights Transport. right yeah. Uh, yeah. Do we need like a, uh, something like an airport to land, or is just that any open field will be usable? All right. So for that one, um, uh, actually, if you watch uh, SpaceX other video, uh, they actually launched the uh, the the rocket in a in a seaport. So it's somewhere it's like thirty kilometers from outside of of a city, because you know yeah, rockets are you know very loud. They are you know they are dangerous. So. Um, you so they plan to make a seaport uh, outside of city and then uh, launch the rocket over there. And for the transport, um, I'm not sure. I, I believe they will use some kind of a, tra a train or like a uh, like a boat to get to the seaport and then bring humans to the rocket. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. All right, thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, right. Thank you. Abhi. Um, so I have uh, one question. Um, so. Uh, the spaceship is going to be completed in 2022. Um, well, that is actually a rough time scale. Um, so, mm -hmm. well, but what's certain is that that thing will be finished by this decade or in this 20, yeah, 2022 decade. Uh, 2022 is just a, an early estimate of uh, how the rocket will be fully finished. Um, but right now, uh, they already have a, a working like a full scale first stage rocket, which the, the one is like in the uh, in the slide, that first stage part, they already have a working prototype of that. And yeah, so we can say that, yeah, they're going to, they're going to be finished like quite early, like 2022, 2023, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, so any uh, official missions that they have planned once uh, the, the Starship has been completed? Um, actually, they, they have, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, so actually, for that, they plan to. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Dear Moon mission, you know Yusaki Mizawa, uh, the Japanese billionaire. Um, actually, they have they he made a deal with SpaceX to go to the moon, but not to to land on the moon, but just orbit around the moon. And they're going to bring artists along. So um, that is one official mission that they're planning to do. For the Mars mission, they actually there is no specific dates yet. Yeah. 
Okay. Mm, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much, uh, for the presentation. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mm. Uh, so next we have Afik. Um, he's going to talk about how he started playing basketball, and Zachary is going to ask um, two questions to Afik. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me, Doctor? Uh, yes. Okay. So before anything I start, I just want to tell that I don't have any slide. I don't prepare any slide because I, I just want to share my story. So I think there's no need any slide because there's no facts or whatsoever. So what I want to talk about is about this ball. This is my favorite sport, which is basketball. So, okay. So I wish Dr. Reza have a good day and my, to all my Cosme also have a good day. So now I will start my story. Before that, just a disclaimer. I'm not the best player in the world. I'm not the best player in the college or whatsoever. I'm just an ordinary player who love to play this basketball. Okay, so let's start from my secondary school. Okay, so back then in my, back, in my secondary school, my friends called me a nerd or such a bookworm because I believe that they call me that be just because one reason, which is because I cannot play sport. So sadly, yeah, I cannot play sport back then. But I do not know that I eventually can play actually. But the one reason is because in my secondary school back then, when PJ subject, you know, Pendidikan Jasmani, my teacher will let us free and the boys will always want to play football. So, um, but this sadly that I, I am a bench leg, I could say, <laughs> you know, I cannot even kick the ball. Yeah, I cannot dribble the ball with my leg. I just kick the air. And when I play with them, they get upset and they always mad at me. And yeah, they kick me out from the team. So yeah, I just sit at my class and read my books and doing homework. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I am a bookworm back then. So then after PT3, I got my results and I moved to my boarding school in Klang. So in that school, which something different happened, but before something different happened, I feel like the same thing, but even worse because after I back from the school, I cannot do anything. I cannot even play my video games that I used to play after I back to school. So I just get to my room, lay down, sleep or wash my clothes and everything is boring. But one day, one day my friend Aiman entered to my room, entered to my room and he said, hey Afi, let's go to the school field and do something. So I was like, no, of course no, I will reject, I immediately reject him. Because in my body school, my school and my dormitory is separated. Like this is the school and there is a bridge and this is my dormitory. So for me, it was like, it takes so long time, a waste of my time and a waste of energy to go to the field. But I mind keep forcing me to go. So yeah, I go to the, I go to the field with him. So when I reached to the school, I saw students play basketball, hockey, basketball and in the gymnasium there's some people playing ping pong so nothing nothing attract me because i don't really love to play sport but Iman asked me so what do you want to play uh, i ask i answer him i don't know you are the one who asked me to come here so it's like okay then he said let's go play basketball so i was like okay but i i tell you early i cannot really play i do not even know how to play this sport so it's like yeah it's okay it's okay i can teach you from the basic so i was like wow okay from this first sentence word it already feels different from my friends back then he not even laugh at me he not even underestimate me when i said i cannot play this sport so i was like immediately i say okay i accept him his offer and i start to play and to be honest Back then, I was like such a noob when, when I just slapping the ball like this. I cannot even dribble the ball. I cannot even aim the ball. 
But day by day, Aiman teach me from the basic and eventually I can play the this sport better. And yeah, from now on, I feel like sports is something that you need in life. And before that, what you really need is a true friend that can lead you to do something new. So how I start playing my, my, my sport is by finding new friends that can support me well. So just a little trick that I know uh, about this sport is spinning the ball like this. So I can hold my finger and yeah, do the trick. So I love to do this and show to my friends and yeah, they still support me. They don't even like say me cocky or whatsoever. So I love my friends and I enjoy to play basketball with them. So that's just a short story from me. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much. So I, put, I open to any question. Uh, thank you, Afiq. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so um, I have two questions. So the first question is, uh, how uh, how do you how by starting playing basketball change you as a student or a person? And then uh, the second question is, if you were to um, you know invite someone to play basketball and they don't know the basics like you did, right? So what what do you think is like um, the first thing that you would teach them to make to get them hooked to these sports? Okay, for the first question, how playing basketball can change me? Basically, a lot. Which before I start to play sport, I don't have I don't have really much boys friends, you know, because uh, back then in my secondary school, my first secondary school, all the boys the football and I cannot blend with them. So when I in my boarding school, I start to play basketball and I blend in more in my friends and I get more friends and I can be more socialized with them and I be more talkative. And yeah, it's so fun. It, it make me more fun person, you know. So for the second question is what will I do if my friends do not know how to play. First thing first, I will invite him or her or anyone to play with me, you know? Because the first thing, first step you want to know how to play is to start playing. Because if you don't start, then you don't know. So what will I do? I will teach him by playing with him. So during the game, I will teach him step by step. So that's how I will do. Okay, any question? Any other question? All right, thank you. Okay, welcome. Okay. Um, so, uh, Fik, I have a few questions. So, you said, um, during your, uh, when you were in school, you said you were a bookworm. So, are you yeah. still a bookworm now? <laughs> okay, basically, uh, back then also, I'm not actually a bookworm. They just call me that because I don't really love sports and I always finish my homework and they copy me. <laughs> okay, so basically I'm not really a bookworm and now I think still the same. I'm not actually a bookworm, but I feel like after I start playing sport and I, I gain more friends, so I feel like I can do works better with my friends. So yeah. Okay, so apart from basketball, do you play any other sports? Mm. Yeah, after I start playing basketball and if the court is used by other people on that day I start to play, I start to find any other sport and one of other sport I play is ping pong and netball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. boys netball. Mm -hmm. Alright, mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much uh, Afiq. Okay. Um, thank you so much Afiq. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, guys, uh, please forget, uh, don't forget to read uh, Afiq. Uh, don't forget to read Afiq at that link. Mm, so I have reopened the link. Read Afiq. Um, <coughs> this uh, next presenter is Faiz. Um, so Faiz is going to talk about how to build your own PC. And Chen is going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, so Faiz, uh, anytime you're ready, you can start. So is Faiz here? Mm -hmm. Not here. Um, where are the, um, my camera work? All right. Hello, uh, Dota, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, Assalamualaikum and very good evening. To all of you and Dr. Reza, uh, my name is uh, Faiz Ayman and I'm about to present about how to build your own PC. Uh, just for this disclaimer, I'm not, I'm not really good PC builder, but I'm no what to talk. So uh, eventually, um, there's a four steps when you have a PC. Um, so for today's talk, I will talk only for one, uh, the first point, which is surveying the part. So I try to explain um, what kind of part you need for your PC. So first of all, things to consider, which is um, the budget, can be very from below 1,000 up to whatever budget you have. And then uh, for the purpose and the size of PC will be affecting some of your buying decision for your PC. So uh, as you can see here, there's a four size, there are four different size for um, motherboard. So um, I have broken up into three parts, which is essential parts. Um, this part you need to have, um, you know, a, a normal computer to work. And optional parts is for if you have extra money to spend. And then tools, you, you, will, be, you will need these tools to assemble your PC. So I try to be as fast as I could because, you know, five minutes. So the first uh, part I'm talking about is a motherboard. So as you can see, there's a four sizes of motherboard. E ATX, which is E uh, stand for standard ATX. Uh, normal ATX, micro ATX, and mini ATX. Um, so um, as the size getting smaller, uh, as you can see, uh, PCIe slots and the RAM slot uh, and the ports at the back of the motherboard will get decreased. Uh, so as you can see over here, normal ATX go for uh, PCIe slots. And as you can see, micro ATX and mini ATX, they got two and one. Same goes for RAM slot, which is over here got eight, over here and here, and this two got four RAM slot, and over here got only two. Uh, so you need to consider that kind of stuff. So the fourth thing is um, there's a four different CPU socket for <clears throat> these two brands. 
which is Intel AMD, uh, which is this first two is for HEDT, high end, high end desktop computing, which is using very large processor. And these two um, is the mainstream processor. As you can see for Intel, there's a CPU shield. For AMD, there's no CPU shield, but you have a lever on the side of it. And then next, uh, you have a motherboard chipset, which is on the left over here. You got Intel, which is Z, H, and B. And for the right, you got for AMD, <coughs> X, B, and A. So the difference is um, Z and X is like a high-end motherboard, which with uh, overclocking support. And H and B is like mid-range. B and A is entry level kind of motherboard. So next is CPU, four things to consider, purpose budget, CPU is generation, and if you need a CPU cooler included. Uh, for purpose and budget, um, depending what kind of purpose you want your PC to be, that if you are into gaming, I recommend you go for Intel. If you are into 3D rendering, I think, M uh, Ryzen will be good. And depending on the budget, you can go from AI5, which is currently the cheapest, and i9, the expensive, the second expensive. The expensive, the most expensive got to be Xeon and Threadripper. Uh, so for CPU cooler, uh, exclusive for AMD, um, because they included stock cooler with processor with one price. So you don't need to spend another money for CPU cooler. So for CPU cooler, there's a two types, which is the air cooler over here. And there's a two types, and, uh, sorry, um, this two is a uh, water cooler, which is this one, this one is closed loop. This is custom loop, which is you can, you know, custom where the water going. And then the second thing is clearance because, um, yeah, because if you got so big CPU cooler, it won't fit on your case. Yeah. <clears throat> so next is RAM. Um, basically, right, the nowadays standard is DDR4, and you have these frequencies. So the greater number is the the better. And how many channel do you need is uh, technically is um, the more channel you have, the better. And then uh, storage, of course, we got two types, which is this uh, hard disk, HDD, and this is SSD in two forms. This is NVMe form, and this is uh, 2.5 inch form. Um, you, know, you need to know you have to use it in SATA of, or M.2. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then the size, 128, of course, you know, uh, 128, 256, 512, SATA tera, I and more so this is power supply um you can choose uh, for as low as 350 watts to up to 1000 plus watts and there's two uh, form factor which is this one is uh, sff small form factor and this is normal size atx and there's a modular there's a modular the semi modular and non modular and um there's a this certificate 80 plus certification, which is um, is about it's the PCU's efficiency. So you got basic to titanium, and then this is a case. Of course, is, you can see there's uh, multiple sizes, and, and then you got operating system, Windows, Linux, Macintosh, <laughs> and then DG view. Uh, you got this uh, latest offering, uh, which is RTX 30 series, which is this one. This is the cheapest. It was launched last week, I think. And this is the AMD offering, 6,000 6, series. And then of course you get, you're gonna need tools like screwdriver. Um, this one is uh, anti-static bracelet cable ties for your cable management. And this is a uh, thermal paste. So this is a um, bad example. You can look up on YouTube for this video. I just wanna say, don't make this mistake. That's all. <laughs> this guy mistake. So that's all for me. Thank you. Alright, 
thank you for your very detailed, uh, not very detailed, but very nice introductions to how to make a PC. So first questions, uh, myself is very new to like PC things. So I want to ask, would you, in your opinion, would you prefer AMD more or Intel more? Yeah, uh, can you answer the first questions? Then okay, I will okay. continue. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, for me personally, I will go for AMD, especially for if you want going for 3000 series, because um, it's much, how serious are you? It have better cost to performance ratio. Uh, but if you are going for, if your purpose is for gaming, I think, I think you should go for Intel because like there's games like um, CSGO, Dota, uh, what else? But um, these two games is CPU, what they call that? <laughs> CPU dependent, which is they don't really use GPU that much. So Intel, so um, I think Intel will be a great option for gamer, especially, yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, so, okay, for my second question is that, because most people buy laptops, so would you prefer people to build their own PC or buy the laptops, like in terms of uh, budget or in terms of uh, like which one is um, easier to handle or kind of things, uh, give your opinions. I see. Um, if you have the money, <laughs> if you have the money and you want the freedom of, um, freedom of you know you being able to upgrade your components and parts and everything, I think you should go for PC. If you want like all in one package, you know you don't have like. You know, you don't have to worry about the specs, everything. I know, like, my slide is like, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, when it comes to PC building, it's, it can be complicated for some people. So if you are that person, I think you should go for laptop. Yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you for your answering. Yeah, all that's right. all for my, for my questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Jen. Um, okay. Uh, so Seeing the slides uh, actually brought me memories uh, when I was an undergraduate student. Yeah. Uh, back then, during our time, okay, laptop was not mainstream. Okay? Yeah, uh, so true. Most, most of us would build our own PC, so we would select the processors that we want, the, true. the housing, uh, the, the form factor that we want, and so everything was customized. And I think, um, but now, nowadays, I would prefer something that that has uh, that was that is already packaged. Uh, mm. Maybe because I'm I'm no longer into that uh, anymore. Uh, but do you yourself build your own PC? Um, I I I have mine over here. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, mean, I, I wanted. To build myself, but the 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 the, the shop clerk like <laughs> he wasn't confident to let me to assemble, assemble them myself. So, <laughs> so yeah. So you you did not actually assemble the, the parts. Ah uh, no no. Okay. But I wish I I I wish I could one day when you know I want to upgrade my PC one day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, if you, you are into this stuff, I think you should try, uh, you know, uh, and start installing the processing. Yeah, yeah. true, true. And making sure the heat sink uh, stick to the processing. Yes, yes, uh, true, true. <laughs> okay, um, then, uh, okay, um, do you think how much does it cost to build a, a typical PC I mean, uh, for students' use? Uh, what do you reckon? Uh, is mm. the, is the price range? I think around the range from 1k to, I'm sorry, 1000 ringgit, Malaysian ringgit to 2000. Because mm -hmm. I, anything beyond that is like, you know, it will be much, it will be expensive. Yeah. 
I think. But this is not not including the monitor, right? Just the... mm, yeah, 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 yeah. For, I forgot to mention about the, the about the peripherals, mm -hmm. the keyboard, mouse, monitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, you you still need that. Mm. Run the PC. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Faiz. All right. Bringing, thank you, Dr. Bringing back all the memories back then. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, please uh, rate Faiz for his talk. Uh, using the same link. Mm. Uh, next presenter is Adam. He's going to talk about some pig that wants to be eaten and Chicken is going to ask the question. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. Right. Uh, All right, I hope you can see my screen and hear oh, yes. Me. Yes. All right. Wait, you can see me, right? I forgot if I turned on my camera. Uh, we can't see. Oh, sorry. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, Assalamualaikum <laughs> and good afternoon to Dr. Reza and my fellow classmates. So today I will be talking about the pig that wants to be eaten. I know this sounds like a very random topic, so I'm going to give a slight uh, introduction to, to my talk. So where does the pig that wants to be eaten come from? It's actually, it came from the book, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe by Douglas Adams. Uh, it's, actually the, it's the second book or the sequel to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know if you've seen that movie or read the book. It was a pretty famous movie in 2005 or released in 2005. So it's a very long story and it deserves a presentation of its uh, a presentation. But uh, today I'll just I'll just be taking one scene from the movie from the book, which is when our heroes in the book escape uh, to a nearby restaurant, which turns out to be the restaurant at the end of the universe. And in the restaurant, our protagonists meet with their dishes, a pig and a chicken, before they are slaughtered and become their food. But there's a slight twist to this uh, meeting. So basically the scene went like this. So our hero, Arthur Dent, uh, he's a vegetarian, so he won't eat meat because it's unethical. People say uh, meat is murder, am I right? And so uh, he meets with the pig and the chicken before they're slaughtered. But there's a twist, like the twist is the pig has been genetically modified to speak English and its sole purpose in life is to be eaten, is to be on someone's plate. So he, he says to Arthur Dent, it's cool, I want to be eaten, that's my goal in life. Okay. And then the chicken has been genetically modified to be a brain dead, a vegetable, some people say. So uh, if you eat him or not, it'll bring no difference because he can't feel pain, he can't see, he can't feel there's no emotion okay so <laughs> that's a little joke and then there's two reasons based on my research there's two reasons why people are being vegetarian or vegan because first is the condition of the animals being kept before they're slaughtered so it's like the misery of the animal before their death so people don't want to eat the animal because they feel pity enough and then uh, the second is the objection of the act of killing. So uh, people don't want to eat animals because you have to kill the animals before you eat uh, eat them. So what this scene what this scene provides is it actually nullifies the second reason, the objection of killing. Because what happens if you take away the sense of uh, the sense of guilt from your uh, sense of guilt by eating the animal. For example, the pig that wants to be eaten. So is it wrong? So I'm asking everybody a question to ask yourself. Uh, you don't have to open your mic to answer, but is it wrong if we want to eat the pig if the pig wants to be eaten? And is it wrong if we want to eat the chicken that basically is a vegetable at this point? So what I just proposed to you is actually what people call a 
thought experiment, which is an experiment that gives hypothetical situations, uh, not real situations, where they ask about the morality of ethics of a certain situation. So, for example, if we analyze the scene just now, some people, uh, if maybe I ask my friend, would they eat? They'll say no, because it still counts as murder. Or no, because the chicken was modified in the first place. Or if I ask another friend, people will say, it's okay to eat the pig because it wants to be eaten. Or uh, it's okay to eat the chicken because it's unconscious. It, you don't bring any, like, uh, something like that. So this is a thought experiment. And there's actually an, an example in real life uh, where the person on the right, you can see Armin Mewis killed, uh, I'm just going to say Bern Jürgen, uh, the guy on the left, he killed the victim, but actually it was fully consented because he posted an ad on the Cannibal Cafe, which is a forum for cannibals. And uh, you can read the ad there. He says looking for a normally built 18 to 25 year old, old to be slaughtered and then consumed. So he actually killed the person. He, he ate the person, but it was fully consented by the person. But he was still arrested and convicted of manslaughter. So this is just a thought experiment, you know, the, the one, the scene. It's just a thought experiment. It, it's not real, but it still gives a question. It still raises a question uh, within everybody, whether it still questions your morals and ethics on how you view the world, you know, because it's different for everybody. And for example, in the scene, when he asked his friend about the situation, when Arthur then uh, asked his friend about the situation, he said it's better than eating an animal that doesn't want to be eaten. Am I right? I don't know, because it's different for everybody. So that's all. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Adam. Uh, I thought you were just going to show the first screen. Uh, tell me that we can, I can still follow the, the talk because the site is actually not moving. What? Um, Seriously? I think it was Tell me that first. Um, uh, Shikin, uh, I hope we got get what Adam uh, was talking about. Okay. Uh, hi, Adam. I'd like hi. to ask. Um, is this movie supporting the vegan movement? Uh, no, it's... The, the author actually... Uh, it's like H.P. Lovecraft. It talks about existentialism. Mm. I don't, uh, it's, it talks about existentialism, but it actually uh, uh, gives a comedic view on, on, on the topic. So it's not actually supporting veganism or vegetarianism in any okay. way. Mm. Okay, uh, my next question is, um, th did you read the book or did you watch the movie? And if you, uh, and either one, what made you decided to suggest the the movie or the book to us? Has the book ever given you an impact or anything? Well, uh, I've read, I've watched the movie and I've read excerpt of the book. I, actually, the book, uh, what gave me the motivation to actually talk about this book is from this book. This book has like 100 100 um, thought experiments and one of the thought experiments is from this from this book so it talks about the pig that wants to be eaten this book actually talks a lot 100 thought experiments a lot of yeah. Mm. yeah okay so so this is the 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 story that you like the most is it well it was the most simplest to <laughs> actually talk about because there's a lot of other stories <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Shikin, for the question. Uh, to add, Adam, uh, what about yourself? You actually ate the pig. I mean, uh, uh, it was up to me. I mean, if he doesn't care, and I could, if I could eat a, eat a pig, then maybe I will. <laughs> but I won't see him being slaughtered in the first place. I'll just wait at the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you mentioned in your talk that people become uh, vegetarian or 
vegan uh, due to the state of the animal before they are being slaughtered and also the objection to uh, killing or murder, right? Uh, was these two factors uh, from your observation or did you read somewhere about it? Yeah, I read it online and in a book. It was uh, quick research. It was quick research, yeah. And it came from this book also. <laughs> Ah, okay. So do you have friends that that are who are vegetarian or vegan? Yeah, I, I do have friends who are vegetarian and vegan. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like uh uh time to makan, so basically uh you need to consider a, a place uh where they are vegetarian meals. Oh. Is that uh, is that the case for uh, you? Or? Uh, yeah, but sometimes when I eat with them, they just won't eat. You know, I mean, they're cool with me eating meat, but they just so. For example, if we go out to eat, then he he won't eat anything if there's no like vegan vegan uh, choice in the menu. But he'll just sit around with us. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Adam, for the talk. Um, All right. Thank you. And uh, so next, next is Azri. Okay. Uh, uh yeah. Uh, so don't forget to rate Adam using the same link. Okay. Um, same link. Let me look. Uh, okay. Right, so um, wait, Adam there at the link and uh, the, okay, so he's going to talk about junk food and look, man is going to ask this. Azim, whenever you're ready, you can. Oh, sorry. Uh, Elaine is going to ask this. Yeah, Elaine, sorry. Nobody is ready? Nice question. Yeah. Yeah, you need to unmute. The mic is on mute. It is. <laughs> mm. Let me start. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. I bid to Dr. Reza and my fellow friends. Uh, I'm Azri and I'm going to present about junk food popularity relies on marketing. First of all, what is junk food? The definition of junk food that I found on Google is that it is a food that is high in calories from sugar and fat with little dietary fiber, protein, vitamins, minerals and other important forms of nutritional value. So in other words, we can say that it is a very unhealthy food and if, for, if taken on a regular basis, it can lead to an increased risk of obesity. Uh, it can also lead to chronic disease like cardiovascular disease, uh, heart attack, and also dental problems. So why junk food popularity, why junk food is so popular? First of all, media advertising. Junk food is advertised through media such as television advertising, newspaper, and billboards. For example, uh, nowadays like in television, we can see the iron goreng medley that is presented before us is so tempting like um, where they do the SMR where people eating their food and it happens to me a lot of time where the next day I buy 
and for the second one the sponsorship they offer a sponsorship to a sports star or an event to help them advertise their product so in this example i can find is the general messi where Liz, uh potato chips company sponsored them sponsored him for about uh for about 10 million for for to, uh, to advertise the product and other than that i can find is pepsi where they sponsored the english premier league the american the english english football uh, such as coca cola where they sponsor the english premier football and third is the in-store promotion have you ever go to kfc mcdonald's or pizza hut maybe they offer like they ask you if you want to go for an upsize for one ringgit so that is so tempting so the in-store promotion to attract customer is, is to spend more on their product so i think that is all for my presentation any question okay uh thank you uh zim um for elaine um let's ask question to Azri. Um, good afternoon, Adri, and thank you for the presentation. Uh, I would like to ask how the junk food company attract kids to buy their product. This is my first question. And then my yeah. second question is, uh, as you said, the junk food is unhealthy, right? Then why they still want to sell junk food? Thank you for your question. Uh, for the first question, uh, how do they attract kids? So, for uh, we can see in two thousand seventeen and roughly on two thousand eighteen, where Kinder Joy, where the food, the junk food, and they attract the kids by selling the the product, and it comes with a toy. So, they attract them by giving them the toys, and I think the toy is uh, the thing is pretty much cheap about four ringgit I think and for the second question uh, why do they sell junk food why do they sell junk food is because it is profitable the the cost to make it is not so high demanding like not so high and then uh, it is it is not expensive I think that is why it is more profitable and delicious and also easy to make and yeah, that is all okay thank you for answering thank you all right thank you elaine uh, okay Aziz, i have question um so apart uh okay elaine was asking about selling junk food right uh but what about people still consuming junk food you know apart from advertising apart from sponsorship and also apart from the uh, one ringgit uh, upgrade of drinks for example so apart from all those uh, why do you think people still consume junk food because some uh, junk food i think they do not provide any they, they don't have uh, you know, extensive advertising uh, even sponsor like big clubs and so why do you think people still consume junk food even though uh, they probably think that it's not not that healthy uh, in my opinion i think uh, because of for example like uh, 100 plus 100 plus is it's not a junk food but it is a carbonated drink and a healthy drink of course where almost all of the doctors uh, recommend it for the for example uh, when we have a fever we need to drink it to uh, energize ourselves so i think not all of the junk food is bad and some of them are really bad also like they contain high sugar 
and high salt. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, so how do you think we can encourage people to eat more healthy food? I think uh, to stop, not stop, like uh, to how do you uh, by limiting the advertisement of junk food, the government because uh, they need to limit this junk food ads and and I, I think uh, to like how do you uh, to increase the tax for the production of this junk food. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Azri, uh, for the talk. Um, please read uh, Azri at the link uh, provided. Okay. Um, don't forget healthy food. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> uh, healthy food. Uh, Biasanya tak sedap lah. Uh, if you don't want to eat sedap food and junk food, uh, typically is sedap. Um, right? Uh, don't forget to uh, read Azri. And uh, next, we have Mansa. This is going to talk about her favorite movie review. And Izzat is going to ask the question. Okay, uh, Marissa, whenever you are ready, to begin. Is my sound clear, sir? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to share screen. Mm. Can you see it now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start. Um, greetings to Dr. Reza and all of my classmates. Uh, my name is Marsa Putriandari. And today I'm going to give you my presentation about my favorite movie review. This is actually just one of my favorite movie because um, there are a lot of other great movies out there. So yeah, this is just one of them. And so, okay, so let's start. Um, so the title for this movie is called Contra Tiempo. As you might already guess, it's not an English movie. It's actually a Spanish movie. I think it was released in 2016. Um, Contra Tiempo itself, it means setback. But in the English version of its release, uh, it's not called setback. Uh, the title for this movie is called the Invisible Guest. So if you want to look it up, um, it's either Contratempo or The Invisible Guest. So what is this movie about? This movie is about a young businessman, very talented and very successful, uh, called Adrian uh, Doria. Um, he wakes up in this locked hotel room um, with a dead body of his lover. Well, his lover is actually, you know, they were having um, an affair. So that's what makes it complicated because um, it's just the two of them and it was um, an affair. So he he really should um, should not, he really should defend himself. And because he couldn't just um, risk ruining his life and his career, basically. So he hires this prestigious lawyer to defend him. And this movie, uh, most of most of this movie is actually just flashbacks, you know, um, because what we're trying to figure it out is um, how could all this happen? How 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 is there a, a dead body in in the hotel room? So yeah, but in the present time, uh, it's just. It's just a conversation between him and his lawyer because most of them are just uh, are just flashbacks, and so that's what movie briefly is all about. Um, yeah. So why this movie? Why do I like this movie? And why do I think that this movie is um, one of my favorites? 
mainly because this surprise element in the end, in the middle, basically uh, most of, uh, basically in this movie, there are just a lot of element surprises and it's, uh, it has suspense, um, drama. And so it's just, it has a bit of everything in this movie. And so uh, another thing is, uh it's not this movie is not about who is the bad guy so we're not trying to find out who is the murderer because i think it's quite obvious um from the beginning of the movie it's quite obvious who did the murder but this movie uh is more about how how did this happen and why did the person do it and such things such things like that so yeah i think uh I honestly I didn't expect the ending at all. That's why I really really like this movie because and sometimes there are movies that are also surprising but the surprise is kind of disappointing to you. But this movie the surprise of this movie is just um you know it's uh, it's very it's very surprising in a really good way. So this is why I really like this movie and it's on Netflix. I'm pretty sure I think most of you have it so it's really easy to access and um, yeah I, I really recommend this movie because I think um, you know it's, it's not I think all uh, you know all the people can watch it because it's not really explicit or anything so yeah it, um, it's so um, fun to watch and just really entertaining so yeah I think that's all for me thank you Alright, uh, thank you, uh, Marissa. Uh, Reza is going to ask. Uh, yeah, the pool, sorry. <laughs> uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Bye. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Dr. Reza, and good afternoon, Marissa. So, you're, you were talking about one of your favorite uh, movies, which is this movie. My, I have two questions. Um, what is the best movie of all time for you? And who is the who is your favorite actor or actress? That's all. Wow. So uh, it's really hard to pick one for movie favorite movie, but um, well, uh, no, it's. it's but uh, probably there's a movie called uh, Manchester by the Sea. Um, it's I think it was released around the time when this movie is released too, 2016, 2017. It's a drama basically about um, about a, a a person who who is really distant with with his family, and suddenly his brother died and. So now he needs to, and his brother has a son. So now he, this this person, you know, is a legal guardian for his nephew. But this, but because he kind of, um, he's really distant with his family. He, he has to deal with it, you know, unwillingly. Uh, but he's kind of, he's kind of trapped in this um, situation. But it's it's a drama movie so i think some people will find that movie boring but i think it's um yeah it's one of the greatest films out there and um the actor is called casey um his name is casey affleck um who is in in the movie he won the oscar for for best actor for playing uh, a role in that movie so it what would make makes it better so that's probably it and because um, you know, for when you're talking about movie, um, um, a great director called Martin Scorsese once said that you know um, the most personal is the most creative. So that's why I chose that movie, perhaps because it really it's not about action, it's not about fights, it's not about anything. It's not like the Avengers or Star Wars or anything. Even though those movies are good too, but this Manchester by the Sea movie, it really just deals about us as a person, as a, a, about a family. So it really is personal. And so that's why I think I chose that movie. 
And so the second question is the actor or actresses. I think probably um, his name is Al Pacino. Um, he is in the movie The Godfather, part one, part two, and part three. Um, he's just a very versatile actor. Um, I think, I don't know, he's probably in, in the 80s, right? I think he's 80 years something years old. And But in the, the Godfather movie is released in the 1972 something. But I watched that movie and I really, really loved it. And I think his performance is so great. So I think I choose Al Pacino for my favorite actor. And thank you for the questions. All right, thank you. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you, Marsa, for answering. Um, and thank you for recommending uh, Contra Tiempo to us. Yeah. Uh, is a thriller or a mystery your favorite yeah. genre of a movie? Or? My favorite genre is definitely mystery um, because, you know, it what makes us stay in the movie, you know, because of we want to find out um, uh, who is the killer or is the bad guy or is the murderer. So, yeah, uh, mystery movies or mystery series is my favorite, yeah. Yeah, same as me. <laughs> so I, I like this kind of movie as well. Yeah. Due to the, uh, you know, unexpected turn of events, right? Yeah, uh, like exactly. Like Edna mentioned. Um, uh, so uh, have you watched... Uh, <laughs> have you watched... Uh, what's it called? Um, but the uh, the one Inception. Have you watched Inception? Oh yeah, yeah, Inception. Yeah, I definitely mm. watched it. What do so, you think? What? Uh, yeah, what do you think is the conclusion of that? I had I had think... to watch. I know. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What What do you what? think is the conclusion of 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 that movie? <laughs> it's it's so the the movie is so complicated. I had to watch it twice and. For some reason, I still don't really get the idea because the director Christopher Nolan, I suppose, um, he he is very talented in this um, time uh, time. Uh, the movie it deals um, very much with time, and so but yeah. But I I watched the movie a long time ago, so. Yeah, I because just, uh, the 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 end scene. Uh, yep. It's it's uh, something that is uh, questionable. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, it's either you know uh, the actor uh, was still in the dream or is oh, he yeah. in the in, in, he has uh, come back to reality. I think that's the question that <laughs> that yeah. is still un unanswered in that question. And the reason, yeah, Tenet. Uh, Tenet, yeah. I, I ha no, I haven't watched it. It's Ah, okay. <laughs> I watch uh, 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 another Christopher Nolan's movies. I watch uh, Mo Memento, if you know, and uh, what else? Yeah, some some other some other movies. Yeah, of Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I I would suggest then uh, you watch then, but I only watch it once, and I, I think I need to rewatch it again, but. That's a part due to the yeah yeah. KPBs, you can uh, you, you can never you can never watch uh Christopher Nolan's movie once. That's just not that's just not gonna happen because <laughs> most of I think all of his movies are complicated because yeah, yeah. You know, with with the timeline and everything, he's just it's it's never gonna be a straight timeline. It's gonna be uh, move back and forward so something like that. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Marsa. Uh, yeah. For Welcome. Talk. Uh, uh, Farid. So we come back to Farid. Uh, sorry, Farid. Uh, please uh, read Marsa uh, in the link. Okay. Uh, uh, link. Yeah. Please give uh, Marsa uh, score by going to that link. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also confusing. Then I need to cross it again. Study again. Uh, but uh, if you're ready, you're ready, you can start. Uh, Lokman is going to ask. Right, can you see my slide, Doctor? Uh, yes. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, uh, good evening. I did to Dr. Reza and my friend. So today, uh, my topic is about podcasts and why you should listen to it. So without further ado, let's just jump to what is podcast. 
your podcast according to iTunes or Apple website. Podcasts are usually original audio show, which means that the audio shows can be recorded audio only or uh, it could be recorded with video and it consisting of individual episodes uh, on a variety of topics. So podcast is basically uh, pretty similar to TV drama, but uh, the difference with podcast is podcast it has a variety of topics and it is not to stick to a specific genre. So it is uh, based on host of the podcast, what they want to host and what topics they want to talk about. And then next is podcast application. So these are some of the podcast application that you could stream podcast. Uh, they, they are Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Pocket, Pocket Cast, and the list goes on. So most of the application are premium web application. So you either could subscribe uh, to it free or you could pay to hear better podcasts with better audio quality. Next is the reasons to listen to podcasts. The first reason is you could learn new things. So, uh, since there is a variety of topics that being discussed about, you could learn things in your areas of interest or hobbies. Or maybe you are interested in business, which you could listen to business or marketing podcast. Or even better, there is also a language podcast where you could learn a new language. And the next reason to listen to podcast is the motivation. So by listening to podcast, you actually could find mot- uh, find motivation to move on from tragic events. The tragic events could be like you lose the way to continue your study, or maybe you have been through heartbroken or your business did not work out. So podcast is there to help you. Uh, there is a podcast for the Good Life Project where they invite guests to share their stories and how they overcome their problem. Uh, I never had a chance to listen to it yet, but it seems quite interesting, so you could listen to it. And then the next uh, reason to listen to podcasts is, is that it actually could improve your listening skill since it requires active listening and use your imagination. Since podcast is a audio entertainment, which is most is audio entertainment. So you need, so it actually train us to be an active listener in order to capture what the host is talking about. And podcast indirectly stimulates your brain to imagine how the storyline is, which is quite awesome and amazing. And then the next reason is it op- uh, you could optimize your time by listening to podcast. So by listening to podcast, it's actually, uh, you can listen it to anywhere and anytime. So back to podcast, Fill the mindless hours of driving, cleaning, working out, and other mundane tasks. So it actually really helps for those that uh, do not know how to uh, kill your time and they have uh, time space time. And then the last reason to listen to podcast is actually short escape, which is to calm your mind after a tiring day. So sometimes you might have a day where you are mentally exhausted and you want to zone out from reality. Well, there is always a podcast that discusses light for weeks, which helps you to unwind and relax your body. I would highly suggest you to give it a try. Who knows, it might work to free your mind. And then, uh, podcast suggestion. Uh, disclaimer is the podcast might, might suit or might not suit your taste. So I would uh, highly recommend you to explore by yourself. But these are some of the suggestions that I, I have listened to. So the first is Mama Session, which is hosted by a Malaysian YouTuber uh, called Jimmy Boy. Their topics are mainly comedy and current issues. So every episode will have different guests. And uh, the average length of the uh, podcast is usually one hour and the main language is English. And then the next podcast is Buah Mulut, which is hosted by Anwar Hadi and his wife. Uh, Takahara Suiko, which is a stage name. I don't really know what is uh, what is her real name, but they usually uh, discuss about random conversational topic that you, we usually talk during our daily life. And the average length of this uh, podcast is usually one hour, and the language is 
mixed language, which is Malay and English. I think that is all from me. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Farid. Uh, so that one. Um, please ask question to Farid. All right. Uh, thank you, Farid, for the talk about podcasts. So I have two questions for you, Farid. Uh, the first one is, what is the best podcast that you have ever listened to and why? And the second question is, in your opinion, what are the challenges in starting a podcast channel? Uh, that is all. Uh, thank you a lot, Mark, for the question. Very good question. So I think uh, the best podcast for me is, of course, Pet Talk because the, uh, the duration is quite short and the content are very high quality and the audio quality is very good also and then for the next question what are the challenges of podcasting is it so, uh, yes yes so, so so the challenges of having of podcasting is not really much but the most important thing is you need to have a quality microphone that is optional actually and then uh, the hardest part is how you upload to the platform such as Spotify, iTunes because they need a uh, require specific process to in order to upload your podcast. I hope that you uh, that answer your question. Uh, and uh, thank you. Um, so far. Uh, so do you have your own personal uh, podcast channel or? Do you mean uh, I I am the one hosting or the one that yeah. I this or oh, I don't have any uh, podcast that I host? Okay. Um, so, so do you prefer podcasts over say um, YouTube videos or? Do you uh, prefer podcast compared to something that is visual? Uh, it actually depends on the situation. If that, uh, I think that I have a lot of time and I will go for visual entertainment. But then, like, if I'm doing work or I am doing chores, then I will usually listen to podcasts. Mm. So, um, so you have sh shown uh, the different podcasts uh, platforms, right? So, uh, yes. which platform uh, do you think is the best in terms of the mix of content in there, or, or do we, can we actually listen to the same podcast in different platforms? Uh, yes, most podcasters usually have their other app at every platform. Uh, but then, when it comes to audio quality, I would prefer uh, to use Pocket S because they have a lot of settings that you could uh, change the audio control where you, uh, you could uh, deepen the voice or uh, silence the background and so on. But then, in terms of variety, I think, and uh, easy to access, I think, at Spotify, since I am usually using Spotify. Uh, Right. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for it, for the talk. Uh, sorry for thank skipping you. Uh, okay, uh, next is, uh, don't forget to uh, wait. Don't forget to read for it. Uh, at the link, at the same link. Okay, um, please give for it. Marks for his presentation at the party in the link. <clears throat> uh, so next we have Akram. Uh, so he's going to talk about um, why we should support a street business. Yes, sir. Uh, one or Eva is going to ask uh, questions later. Okay, uh, Akram, in time. Yes, okay. sir. Uh, sir, can you see my face and my screen, sir? Uh, yes. Wait, yes. Okay, so we are. Okay, so um, good evening, um, Dr. Reza and my fellow classmates. 
So my name is Muhammad Akram bin Saimi and I will be presenting my topic which is why we should support um, street business. Okay, so uh, street business, uh, as you all know, uh, as, uh, in our country, there are many street business that we uh, have here. Uh, there are people who, sell, who might sell um, nasi lemak, who might sell drinks, who might sell um, kuih muih. There are so many of them. You can even see when we go out, we definitely will see them. They are at the roadside. Uh, okay, so uh, why we should support them? So the reason why we should support them is because street business is their only source of income. Um, as we all know, um, there are many, since there are many um, street business uh, hawkers, uh, some of them, many of them, um, they, uh, they, are, they are selling uh, foods because that is their only job. They have no other job to do. Um, some of them might be students um, who have finished studying and they apply for a job but they do, got rejected or did not manage to get a job so to to in order to survive they decided to open a street business and there are also many uh, some people who could not continue study could not find any job and finally they decided to do the same which is start um, open a street business so one uh, the next reason is uh, because due the, to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So as you all know, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the whole world. Uh, almost every country was uh, uh, imposed a lockdown. Uh, in Malaysia also, we uh, the, uh, the government has uh, imposed a MCO, Movement Control Order, which um, it restricted people from going out. So uh, limited people uh, will will be able to go out or buy foods or anything. So that has made uh, their, their street food business from bad to worse. Because since there are limited people going out, the, the customer also decreases. Imagine if uh, since the, the MCO was imposed in March until September or October. There are about uh, se around seven months. Seven months it takes. So imagine if they have only one job, which is uh, selling uh, food uh, at the roadside, and MCO was uh, imposed, and they have no income at all. At least if before MCO, uh, they still have customer. Um, around two thousand ringgit a month they can get. And after MCO, they get zero ringgit since they are not selling anything. So it is very difficult for them to survive. So the COVID-19 makes it from bad to worse. So see, um, as you can see in the picture, there are also a uh, seller who are elderly people. They are so old and yet they still have to sell uh, food uh, in order to survive, in order to accommodate their expenses. See, it is it is very uh, sad actually to see because uh, at this time, at that time, at that age, they should be resting in the house, should be watching TV, should be enjoying with their uh, grandchildren, and yet they have to, they still have to sell food at the roadside under the hot sun in order to survive. So it is actually um, quite tough for them. Actually, it's very sad to see. So. What we can do is, um, my advice to you all is, please go buy from them, help them because they really need you. Imagine if they have, uh, they are selling, they are one person and they are selling uh, food to accommodate, to, to, to cover, to, uh, to feed their children. Imagine if they have um, around more than five family members, how are they going to survive? It is very difficult for them actually. So. Um, what what I can say is, if we think that uh, we are the mostly affected ones, there are more people who are struggling even more. Struggle, they are struggling even more. Uh, imagine if at least we can eat uh, uh two times a day, lunch and dinner. There are people who are who did who only have only one lunch, only one meal, lunch or dinner, and there are also people who did not have any meal at all because they got no money. So it is very difficult so for them. So my advice to you is go buy from them. If 
if you if you go out and you saw um some road street hawk uh, street hawkers stop please stop your car and go buy for them don't 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 argue lah if the if the price is uh, if, uh expensive or a bit high just buy for uh, buy from them the the more you buy the better because you are you are actually helping them so i think this is my last slide uh i just want to end my slide my presentation by saying hashtag kita jaga kita thank you everyone that's all from me doctor Hello doctor. Hello uh, Akram. Hi Wei. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to ask uh, what is uh, another alternative that you can suggest suggest us to to help or support the street 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 what street heat street business. Ah, uh, street business. Yes. And one one another question is what is your opinion about uh some authorities that forbid them to do their business uh on side of the road okay i will answer the first question first um um i think the alternative for me to help them uh, i think we can actually uh promote their business by promoting in social media account like facebook or twitter or instagram you can just uh, say that uh, if you are at the at uh, some place like in klang or shalam or pj if you are your you your home is there or you are nearby at their stall just go and buy for them okay so um your next uh, the second question i cannot actually get what what you are uh, asking what what is your opinion about um, that some authorities that forbid the oh the, i see ah uh, you uh, understand that? yeah 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 uh, i think they are making a mistake because they are they are they are they, they are not they are how to say ah they are in him they are uh, uh they are they are <laughs> they are i will answer in can i answer in malay yeah yeah <laughs> they are mereka tak mereka menghalang mereka menghalang uh, the street hawkers from getting money to survive so i think it is uh, actually a wrong thing to do because uh, there are many people uh, who are struggling and still you have to close their their stall and it is a very wrong thing to do i i disagree with their action actually uh, that's all okay, anyway okay, well, uh, so akan, do you personally know someone who is in the uh, in the in street business Yeah, uh, my friend is actually selling uh, street food also. He's selling nasi kukus. Hmm. Yeah, and I made it a practice every every week to buy from him every Saturday, Saturday morning. So he live close by. Yeah, it is really close to my home actually. Hmm. Yeah, and um, talking about old people that you mentioned in your talk, uh, like yesterday I went to uh, one mall and I saw this. Very old man carrying a bungkusit uh, um, package, you know, uh, still taking orders even though he's uh, already at an age where you know he should yeah. be relaxed at home. So, yeah, I think people are uh, struggling uh, at this particular moment in time. Mm, okay, uh, thank you, Akram. Uh, okay, thank uh, you, sir. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> Uh, this um read uh read account in the uh, Google form. Yeah. <coughs> Please read uh account in the same in the uh, using the same link. Okay. Uh, next we have uh at the hum or the hair. So he's going to talk about how to write. 
Vira is Vira and Carl the host, and Zikra is going to ask questions later. Okay, uh, they have any time already? Uh, hello, Doctor, can you see me? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, wait. Uh, can you see my slide? Uh, yes. Okay, can I start now? Uh, yeah. Yes, you can. Okay. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to Dr. Reza and all my friends. Today, I will be explaining on how to write Wira. So what I'm going to explain is a bit about Wira, the horse breeder, saddle, how to get on Wira, how to write, and how to get off from Wira. So as you know, Wira is a horse. It's a male and eight years old. Was born in 6 May 2012, dark brown in color and about 4.5 feet tall. And this is the horse breeder. How to apply horse breeder on Wira. Horse breeder is important that it is how to control the horse. So uh, the first thing to do is you put the metal bit in inside the Wira's mouth and then you get the brow band here and the headpiece is here through here. Yeah, through this part and then you tighten the headpiece around his neck but not too tight, the, this headpiece. And then next, you put the saddle. To ride Wira, you can use or without saddle because Wira's back is quite round, so yeah, you can either use saddle or not. So to put the saddle, we just need to bring the saddle and put it on Wira's back and then tighten the belt around his belly as tight as possible so that it won't slip. If when you what is the when you step uh, in the uh, yeah <laughs> when you step in the stirrup and then how to get on Wira, you can. Just using tools, chair, bucket to make it to get the higher ground or you can just use the saddle stirrup as stepping yeah, the stirrup, yes. and you can always ask for help to other people to pick you up if you are a little child and then how to write Wira first of all, uh, this is important for the breeder first of all, if you snap both, it will it goes forward. This is the range. If you snap both range, it will go forward. And then if you pull the left, it will turn left, pull right, turn right. And then if you snap again, it will speed up. And if you snap again, it will speed up. And to slow down, you just pull and keep pulling until it slow down. And to break, just keep pulling until it breaks. And for the reverse, if the horse is staying still, if you keep on pulling, it will reverse. Yeah, and then how to get down, you can just simply jump down or use the saddle syrup as stepping and ask for help. Just ask for help is always an option to ride or get down with us. And then before I ending this slide, I will show you a video on how I ride the Wira. Can you see this video? Yeah. Not moving. Uh, it doesn't have that many sounds. Okay.
Okay, uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, is it now? Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon, doctor, and good afternoon, Adam. So the first question, I have two questions. The first question is, uh, when did you start to learn how to ride Wira? And the second one is, who introduced you to horse riding? Uh, can you repeat your first question? Uh, the first question is, when did you start to learn how to write? Where? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, for the first question, I actually start to learn write when I was 10 years old. I write other horses at that time, actually. Yeah, and then, the what was the second question? Who introduced you to horse riding? Uh, it's actually my uncle. My uncle is actually who teach Wira how to, uh, you know, how to sit up, how to turn right, turn left, break. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's very cool. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank Welcome. you, Zikra. Um, okay. Um, I was about to ask the same question. Uh, but is Vera your horse? Ah uh, yes, Vera born in my hometown. Yes, near me actually, <laughs> at my home. Okay. I've been with Vera since he was born. Okay. Um, so when you in the slide about how to write Vera, right? Um, so can you go to the slide where you mentioned about how? How to write yeah, this one. Uh, yeah, so this maneuver, I mean, to go forward, turn left, turn right, you, Vira needs to be taught how to respond to this uh, uh, yeah. action. So you said your uncle taught Vira all this? Or ah, yes. is it natural My for a horse to actually? Uh, no, if you ride the untrained horse, it will keep struggling until you fall down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, how difficult is it to, to, to train Vira, or how, how easy or how difficult is it to train Vira to, to actually uh, respond to these um, commands? Mm. Actually, it depends on the horse. If the horse start learning at young age, it's quite easy. And if it is old at old age, it's quite hard. Because it needs to get used to this bit, the breeder. Yeah. Okay. And you guys started learning all this since at what age? Since about one year. Uh, when and eight months old, because you can start right it when it turns two years old. Dutch coma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dehe, for the talk. Um, <coughs> so don't forget to leave uh, Dehe score there at the link, the same link. <coughs> Next, you have Liana, who's going to talk about brain damaging habits. And Isa is going to ask the you know, questions later. Please wait there. Uh, let me edit. Uh, Liana, you can begin and unmute your mic. Okay, uh, Liana. 
Ya ni berjawab. Yeah, then are you speaking at the moment? The microphone is on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we oh. can hear you. Um, wait. Can't see you. Can you see my slide? Yes, I can see your slide. Okay. Can you show your face? Okay, um, I'll start. Um, good evening to Dr. Reza and everyone. I'm Liana and today I'll be talking about brain damaging habits. So the first one is lack of sleep. Um, when you're sleep deprived, your body hasn't had enough time to rest and recharge, making it harder to learn and recall information. There are actually two ways in which lack of sleep hurts your memory. First, um, when you are tired, it is much harder to focus, meaning that it is more difficult to learn and absorb new information. Um, the second one, sleep actually acts like a glue that helps your brain to retain information. Nothing is going to stick without enough sleep. Next is smoking. Smoking causes the thinning of cortex, which is the area of the brain where important thought process such as memory, language and perception occur. Smoking harms your memory by interfering with the amount of oxygen that travels to your brain. Um, if you quit smoking, the damage can still be reversed, but um, only, only when um, you quit it at an early age, because when you are younger, your body just heals faster. But that doesn't mean um, that it's too late for old people to stop smoking. They can still reverse the effect of smoking when they quit, but they don't heal as fast as um, young people do. Next one is um, excessive alcohol consumption, too much alcohol. Um, when it comes to memory, alcohol can leave a lasting effect and interrupts your ability to form long-term memories. The more alcohol you drink, the greater the damage. Um, Drinking too much alcohol can also interfere with short-term memories, uh, even after the effects of alcohol have worn off. Years of drinking alcohol can cause rare forms um, of memory loss that leads to confusion. There's actually a condition called alcoholic dementia, which is similar to Alzheimer's disease, um, which is caused by serious condition of um, alcohol abuse or addiction. This can happen when you're older. The next is lack of personal interaction. So if you are a loner or if you don't have friends, there's a chance that you might be hurting your brain. Um, conversation is extremely beneficial for your brain. Um, the process of having to order thoughts and feelings and then convert them into language while making sense of the words coming from the 
person that you are talking to is a remarkable workout for your brain. Um, and I think that's why nowadays employers like to employ people with good communication skills. That just means that you have a sharper thinking skills. So if you think that your brain is getting slower nowadays, that might be a that may be a sign that you are lonely or you have no friends. So you just need to find someone that you can have a conversation with. That will definitely help your help with your thought process. Last one is being sedentary or having a sedentary lifestyle. A sedentary lifestyle is a, uh, a type of lifestyle involving little to no physical activities, which is basically what we are doing right now. Um, regular exercise is good for your um, overall health, not just for your brain. Um, but if you hate working out, you, you don't have to push yourself. Walk, uh, walking is actually a good form of exercise. You just need to walk at least 30 minutes um, 30 minutes a day for three times a week. Um, I personally like to go for morning walks because morning walks uh, with uh, with morning walks you will get um, your dose of vitamin D, which is also important for your brain. Uh, fun fact: most adults are actually vitamin D deficit, um, and that's why sometimes they feel like their brain is getting slower. They just need some exposure to the sun. Um, so a good 30 minutes walk is very good for your brain and also very good for your memory. So I think that's all from me today. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Diana, uh, for the talk. Um, Isa, please ask question to Ian. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, my first question is um, for the first point, it's about sleep, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, can, wait. Is it advisable to sleep uh, for uh, six, at least six hours straight, or just we sleep with cumulative of at least six hours per day? And my second question is. Uh, I am a passive person. Uh, I do not, I don't do sports. So, okay. other than walking or exercise, because I also do have uh, spine related pain, so I can't do exercise that much. Can you suggest me another, another way to, to do some activities? Okay, for, for the first question, um, I think as long as you get enough sleep, then it's okay. If you still feel tired, if you still feel sleepy, that means that you don't have, get enough sleep. So it doesn't have to be like six hours straight or eight hours straight of sleep. You can space it out if you have conditions like um, trouble sleeping. But as long as you get enough sleep, Good sleep is um, better. And then for the second question is, um, are the activities that you can do other than walk, walking, right? Yes. Um, yoga is a good physical, uh, I mean, yoga is not um, as heavy as walking or just a light workout. As long as you keep your body moving, you sweat a little, then I think that should be okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Is that the question? Uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, you mentioned that lack of personal interaction is one of the big daily habits. Uh, what about um, online interactions such as uh, chat or online chatting? Does that actually count as um, a kind of personal interaction? Yes. Without I yeah, I think so. As long as you have a thought process, like when you chat, you need to arrange words so it helps your brain to, you know, have a thought process. That's okay too, I think. But I think it's better to have a um, face to face interaction. That's always better because you can gauge their emotions, they, you can gauge their understanding. So. Okay. 
Alright. Uh, thank you, uh, Diana, for the talk. Um, uh, please, uh, everyone, please give uh, Diana a score at the same bit link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, please give her a score at the bit link. Um, before we adjourn, uh, before we end, uh, just like to remind you about uh, next week. Yeah. Uh, next week. Uh, okay, next week. I uh, just need to prepare slides because we are going to have a project monitoring session next week. We don't need to provide any kind of report. We just need to prepare slides. Um, one or two persons can represent each group to provide an update on what has been done so far. Okay. Um, so you know that uh, you are moving in your project. For example, uh, the amount of uh, funds that have been raised so far in terms of preparing your materials, if you are uh, preparing for teaching, okay, um, <clears throat> uh, things like that. And if you have any issues that you have encountered so far, you can also uh, point it out next week. Okay, so you can see whether we can uh, sort it out. Um, uh, eight minutes, uh, the maximum. Um, so, yeah, of course, the shorter the better. I just want to get an update uh, about the progress. And if you require, if you want to add uh, UM's logo in any of your promotional material, uh, I have provided a form that you need to fill in and send it to me because you need to. Uh, seek permission before using the uh, University of Malaya's logo. And if you need a certificate, okay, um, if you need to give your collaborator, uh, I think it's recommended to give your collaborator a certificate. Um, I will provide you with a template later where you can fill in the name of the of your collaborator, uh, so that you can give the it's a, in the digital form, okay. So we don't have any physical certificate. Um, so we're gonna provide you with a template that you can use to fill in the name of the collaborator in the um, in the certificate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we we need to keep track of uh, where the certificate. Uh, have been given to. Um, uh, later, I will create a folder where you need to put in uh, the certificate that you have uh, given to the uh, to the collaborator. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay uh, this is just um, a sneak peek of. It's not uh, this year's. This is not this year's uh, final exam question. This is actually last year. Final exam question. Um, just a sneak peek. Um, uh, the one of the questions that is that I'm going to ask because for this year, uh, last year I was tasked to uh, to create questions on uh, logical uh, fallacy. Okay. Um, so this year, another lecture is preparing it. Uh, um, I. I have seen uh, just a few questions from that from uh, her part. But basically, uh, you you given a, uh, a scenario, okay, and then you need to identify which fallacy uh, the scenario is referring to. Is it appealing to fear? Uh, is the scenario about flattery? Is it a red herring, and so forth? Okay, um, for the final exam. You need to understand each of the uh, different uh, logical fallacy because you need to uh, give 
you need to provide label for each of the scenario provided. Okay. <clears throat> uh, right. So before we end our uh, class today, uh, you have anything that you want to ask or or do you want me to give us up on 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 certain topics? Um, uh, if the topic is within my if I can uh, within my expertise or within reach, I can probably uh, give you a presentation, a short presentation on on the topic. So if you want me uh, to present any topic, you can give a suggestion. You can put it in the chat. Uh, if there's none, then okay. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, anything else? <coughs> Uh, so I'm not going to scroll down because I saw that she also took some of my questions, if not all of the questions uh, for this year's exam. So if you're lucky, the first, the 1A is the exact question that you're going to encounter in the exam. Um, <clears throat> Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you want to ask or before we end? We will continue with the topics. Okay. Uh, we will continue with the topics um, after um, after next week. The week after next week. Okay. The week after next week, we will continue. Uh, Because we have to look at um, digital thinking, okay, uh, which is this week. So next week, uh, project management session, uh, week ten until um, so we still have week ten until week yeah, thirteen to do the revision and to, to review the remaining topics. <coughs> Okay, uh, so if there's no uh, no further questions, um, so I'll see you I'll see you next week okay, for the project monitoring session and also uh, uh, continue with the individual talk session. And if you want me to talk about any topic, uh, maybe about my um, uh, experience. Uh, after graduation or things like that, okay. Um, so you're uh, free to put in the chat or send me a uh, private message. Okay. Uh, so um, and since as uh, you, you have time, okay, uh, please um make sure that your project is also uh, running as well. Okay. Uh, the so next week you're gonna see uh your progress update. Okay, uh, see you next week and um, thank you for uh, joining the class today. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Thank you, everyone.